And good evening. Welcome to the Delta Head stream. I am James Howell, and tonight we are going to do kind of a stopgap stream. I've finally settled on the game that we're going to play from beginning to end. Uh, the next one, uh, which is going to be in uh, perfect time with my third favorite month out of the year, which is October, which is excellent because Halloween falls at the very end of the month, and that is one of the best times to have a big holiday because then you can have a big lead up to it, and that's a great time. So I'm going to play Dead Space uh, on my 360, and uh, to do that, I need to reacquire Dead Space, which is going to require a used game store opening because I'm not paying $20 for it on Steam, and uh, then acquiring that and bringing it here. So tonight, we are going to take a look at Clock Tower Ghost Head. It's right here with this Oni mask on the front, this guy right here. And I believe that the, uh, the US version of this was Clock Tower The Struggle Within, which I believe was a lot more expensive when I went to find a copy. So. I have the Japanese copy, which was also intended, of course, in part for, you know, language practice and the like, but uh, I think it's got, I think it's got enough English in the interface that we can probably bumble through it tonight with, uh, with my, uh, beginner level kanji and, uh, and grammar. So, yeah, so that's going to be a good time. Uh, quick pregame show here, reading this week, I've, uh, finally gotten past the introduction on this fella right here. Coriat's Crudities. Uh, Thomas Coriat was a uh, was an English travel writer uh, from the 17th century, I believe. Yes, 16th, 17th century, and uh, has the most renown. If this ever comes up in a trivia uh, game, uh, he is the renowned. He is renowned for introducing the fork to England from the continent, and uh, so we can all of us who uh, get. Our culture from England can thank him for that. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so, but, but a lot of his, uh, it, it's, it's a lot of travel writing from when he was walking around on the continent and, uh, and he's starting in France, of course, because that's where the boat goes. And uh, it's amazing uh, how many of the remarkable sites he brings up are execution sites. And also how this, it's just, it's such a huge shift in perspective of, you know, like death <laughs> as spectacle, uh, socially, um, uh, and uh, coming out of the medieval era into the early modern. Uh, and uh, these sites are not really remarked upon as uh, there's no judgment. It's just an acceptance that there are people that are going to die and it's going to be a public spectacle. And this is where it happens. And there's one paragraph in particular that's kind of, uh, that, that's particularly haunting, as a matter of fact, because in fine travel writing manner, he's going from one thing to the other, and he's like, and that is where we break murderers in the manner of our, of our Roman ancestors, and down the road's a beautiful little church with people who worship that are very sweet, and you find this all over the, all over the countryside. And so it's just like right back to back, uh, and it doesn't skip a beat, so... Uh, yeah, I'm super excited to continue reading through it. This is a, this is fortunately an abridged version, so uh, it's getting to the good stuff sooner than later. And I've also begun rereading Terry Pratchett's Mort, which is a very different kind of good time. Uh, and I've also continued reading Cookie Hipponia's We Belong. Uh, Cookie is the guest on the most recent Delta Head podcast, and she is... Uh, she is uh, she's a fantastic writer and excellent speaker. Highly recommend you uh, take a look, take a listen at the latest Delta Head podcast and get to hear her thoughts on uh, on sort of social sim games. It's it's a good time. Evening, Iceman Dan. Evening, Time Zombie. Scary? That's a good question. Uh, I don't. I think it's probably going to be more in the cheesy uh, horror direction than scary. Ghost Head is largely regarded as one of the worst in the franchise. And, uh, and so I, I don't think it's going to be that scary. Uh, I, I can't say what the spider content is, since I have never played it before, and this will absolutely be a first time bumbling through of, of this game. So, uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Evening Viper, it's good to see you. It's been forever. And, uh, yeah, uh, no, no, I've, I've got you in mind. I got you covered. I got you covered. I know, I know about the spiders as a concern. Um... But yeah, so uh, quick. Uh, oh no, wait, no, me, no, no. There's still this. This is still here in the background. It's uh, it's still short hair. It's still long hair. It's not. Uh, it's not quite uh, cool enough yet to kind of go the whole day with everything, 
you know, down. So uh, you go half the day with half it pulled back, then all of a sudden you pull out the little band here, and all of a sudden this part right here is really flat down, and everything else is floofed out back, and it's just like, wow, just got to commit to one or the other for the course of the day. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, that, unfortunately, uh, time is coming here in the next few months. Again, October, third favorite month, uh, is uh, time's coming when I'll be able to just kind of keep it down all day. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, it's going to be a while before it's short hair again. But uh, to wrap up the pregame show, this is a... Uh, so this is Seijin Suzuki, or rather Suzuki Seijin. I've reached a point where now I feel that it is... Uh, it, it just it makes more sense to use the Japanese convention of, of surname first and then personal name second. So I'm trying to get into that habit. Uh, Suzuki Seijin's uh, Man the Man with a Shotgun is a uh, 1960s color Nikatsu film. It's uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of an attempt at a western kind of feel you know stranger rolling up into town he's got a pass behind him but he's not going to share what it is and he's got a personal mission and uh and uh, that that's that stranger is played by Hideaki I'm oh, sorry I'm gonna gonna follow through on what I just said uh Nitani Hideaki and uh, who's one of my favorite actors from that period uh he's very good very very stoic in a in a way that is also sort of charming and engaged he's like it's like he's always observing and he is also very warm and so it's a very interesting combination for a sort of detective type figure and in this one he plays sort of a more roguish character and that's not totally uh his type um Oh, no, no, I don't, I get kind of thinner sort of in the back here, which is one of the reasons why the long hair actually benefits me. Um, oh, this one is good, Iceman Dan. Uh, this has, uh, this has a couple of moments that, again, uh, Suzuki does a really good job, especially early, early in his career, of just telling a straight story, which is not what he's known for, <laughs> particularly, uh, especially with things like pistol opera. Uh, but uh, but this is uh, this is this is neat. And one of the things I want to look at here is uh, one of the great things about a, a about a solid director. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the uh, a, lo a lot of the sort of uh, movies that uh, that he did, I believe, were filmed in sets. They're very indoor things. They're very sort of urban stories. And I don't think he has many stories that take place in a wilderness. And this one does because it's going for sort of a western feel. And uh, just the 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 director's eye using nature is a very interesting uh, is a very interesting thing because it's not necessarily about creating a stage, uh, but it is about framing what you find. And uh, some of the framing, evening space hamlets. Good to see you. Uh, we're looking at uh, Suzuki Seijin's The Man with a Shotgun here real quick before we jump into Ghost Head. Uh, and so uh, the, the framing on how he breaks up space using the natural environments that he finds are is really neat. Like here's the, this is one of the establishing shots. It's a lumber train that's got a little passenger car here on the very far back. Uh, evening Pop, Bun Pop Gun Perry, and thank you for the follow. I actually forgot I still had that little widget up on this uh, this particular thing. Uh, but yes, good evening, thank you. Uh, there's a little uh, traveler car there in the very back where our characters are. Anyway, just looking at the way this trestle bridge breaks things up, it's really interesting that the tree line actually extends above the frame, so it cuts it off and everything is perfectly framed in green. And... Uh, Really, I haven't played RDR2, uh, uh, at least not to the point where I would recognize the shot. Uh, but uh, yeah, and and so, but but he's not he's not he's not like anti sky. This is uh, uh, one of the one of the one of the more interesting sort of like f flat flat depth landscapes I want to call it uh, that uh, that I've seen uh, where it's sort of monochromatic so it cuts out the sense of depth and distance but at, clearly based on the way the rocks are moving it's distant and so it's neat it's neat it's got kind of a well, bichromatic dichromatic whatever uh, and then here's another bridge another really bridges are really interesting because they are human structures that fit in with the natural environment that seem to sort of spawn and grow from it and uh, there, it's, it's a really good way to introduce a straight line into an otherwise sort of uh, maybe confusing horizon uh, where you, where you, or confusing site where you're trying to find the horizon. And uh, here's, a, here's a very lovely establishing shot. Many uh, in, uh, in the, uh, the Japanese mountains where a lot of these are filmed, uh, there are, apparently are so many opportunities to catch these kinds of uh, sort of just mountains cascading into each other uh, because uh, especially in a lot of the historical dramas that are uh, filmed outside you get to see a lot of this and uh, yeah it's 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 a very neat use of it right here where all those sort of cascading trajectories are sort of pointing to or at least uh, hovering about Nitani because he's the main character and that makes sense uh, yes 
Yes, bridge is absolutely a show of power, and as a matter of fact, we're going get to get, a, get to an interesting use of a bridge in that respect in a little bit. Uh, there's, uh, don't try to scare me, it's all part of Japan. Oh yeah, this is, uh, uh, he's going into this uh, this area and somebody is kind of like bootlegger country, right? He's saying, don't, don't go over there, don't, don't go on that mountain, people don't fare well over there. And uh, he's like saying, I don't, I don't care, I'm fine. So yeah, it's this sort of Western or West, Western or Western spirit uh, brought to a, a movie that is conspicuously set in Japan. Uh, but yeah, and again, like another nice use of the bridge there, going back, creating distance, and then arcing off to the right, and, uh, and really nice framing here of the of that conversation, nice and off center, and uh, also really again just really good diagonals. It's so good, it looks so good, <laughs> and. Uh, there we go. Yeah, more bridge. And this is uh, the final nature shot I'll show you, which is a really neat use of distance, where initially as this shot is set up, uh, everything kind of looks, it's kind of hard to tell what distance and what scale things are at, but uh, as soon as this guy on the right sort of enters to aim, uh, he's able to hit somebody all the way at the end of that thing with just a pistol, and uh, good on him, because those things I imagine lose accuracy after like five feet, but, um, um, I don't know. Uh, I expect there's. Uh, tch, it seems it seems like it would be rude to uh, to damage local bridges <laughs> for the sake of a movie. Uh, so I'm guessing many of them are probably built for the sake of the uh, sake of the film. But uh, I don't know for sure. Um, it's also a nice contrast. You've got your uh, your kind of city slicker uh, criminal there with the with his suit and his giant uh, decorative flower. That's uh, that's charming. Uh, well, no, some of them, uh, some of the the bridges. In fact, one of the ones I'll show you here in a second actually are like they're 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 human bearing, they're load bearing, uh, and it, it, again, it gets it gets conspicuously weird when all of a sudden they shift to what is clearly a set, like that is absolutely painted, and uh, and it, it's a weird transition that I don't know how I feel about it. The it, it, there's almost sort of like this I don't know maybe the David Lynch quality. To having the artifice uh, side by side with uh, with that lush natural environment, <laughs> leave with prime footage. Now that is um, that is some brutal auteur uh, activity right there. Uh, and uh, and yeah, some really some nice compositions of some physical objects set up there. That's a that's a good clustering junk pile. I like the straight lines and the circles. You've got the clock there on the right and the sort of camera cover in the upper left. Uh, kind of alongside uh, a lot of the straight lines that are that are showing up there in the center, and uh, this nice thing where you have one clock. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a neat setup. Uh, there, it's like a target practice thing. All the clocks are set to the same time. Each participant has to shoot their clock right when the second hand hits nine. So they use that one as their reference, and it's uh, it's a charming scene. Anyway, this kind of gives me a weird Blair Witch vibe, <laughs> like the other two clocks are turning facing the wall because the Blair Witch is about to get you. Um, and, uh, and this right here, which is, again, just really nice use of lines with the shadow and the folds of the paper and the shattering of the glass. Um, but so yeah, so this is the uh, this is the this is the the storytelling technique that I think is really interesting here, and uh, just to kind of briefly describe it to you, uh, Suzuki does like a time jump, and to connect two moments in the same story scene in the same story beat that happen at different times. Uh, he will use a scene that could plausibly occur in either moment as the connection, and it sort of uh, it, it sort of makes your brain sort of uh, double check what it just experienced, but then it makes sense afterwards. And I'll kind of show you what I mean. So right here you have uh, let's see, uh, right here you've got the hero. He's crossing this bridge again. Here's our bridge. He's crossing this bridge, uh, which is somewhat uh, perilous, and uh, here's one of the antagonists who is. You know, kind of chopping at one of the ropes to get him to fall in, and uh, as he does, and there he is, and there you go. <laughs> so, it's uh, it's it's a good time had by all, and so there are the uh, the the mountain folks sort of laughing at him. The uh, the outsiders come in and is subject to their pranks, and so then it cuts directly to this, right? So they're crossing another bridge, and the soundtrack, the foley, everything is is the exact same. It's like, there's not a break. It does not tell you that this is a se separate moment in time. And they're still laughing about it, right? The guys fell straight in. And then it cuts to him hanging out on the river, drying his clothes, clearly a time jump. And this scene right here, this is what is interesting about that, this sort of storytelling moment. This, 
and this these happen like hours apart but the way that it is cut this scene happens the audio track is unbroken and it's as though this could follow what happened and this could also precede what happens and and it it, it, it connects the two perfectly and uh, and that's really neat and he does this elsewhere as well so in this instance uh here he is you see him kind of here in the background he is uh entering the house that he's staying at and then somebody breaks a window stabs a note to the door and uh, he picks it up and reads it so let's have a showdown as promised uh high noon i mean again the western thing and then the 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 woman who's uh, sort of putting him up in the house uh is is upset with him why must you accept this challenge again an instance where this shot right here is plausibly the conclusion of this moment so standing there break knife read and it is also plausibly the moment that happens right before this right uh, and but this is hours later so there's a time jump and there is a scene that is used that could end the first time moment and could also begin the second time moment that's used to connect the two and and that's brilliant that's so cool because uh, it, it creates this dynamism, this momentum, and also this brief moment of confusion that you have to sort of, once you, once you overcome it, you understand what's happened. And it is a way of compressing action so you don't have to tell as much unused, unnecessary story. And it really conveys how much, how much exposition you can really cut out of a story and still have it be intelligible. And I think that's just great. That's fantastic and I have much admiration for it. So. With that in mind, this is our game for the night. Clock Tower Ghost Head. Uh, regarded, I am told, as one of the worst in the series. Uh, let's see, I picked this up used, and every single Japanese copy, Japanese used copy of a game I have ever ordered offline or online has been just immaculately preserved. The, uh, the care taken with these is, is, is stunning. Like, I've even still got the, uh, the little slip in here that's for, that's, um, uh, you know, what consoles do you play? How often do you play them? Uh, human entertainment would like to know, like, how many of their games you buy. Uh, I'm sorry, Tom Zombie, I missed that comment. Uh, yes, uh, I have I have never really had good luck uh, photographing light myself. Um, but yeah, yes, I agree, Iceman Dan, especially in a, in a moment of dynamism. It also really, it does a lot for... Uh, does a lot for uh, for comedy timing too, comedic timing. Um, uh, 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 Kitano uh, Takeshi is is very good at this, um, where he'll have a setup and then the punchline, but you don't see what happens in between. It's just this very quick hard cut. Uh, yes, Viper, same, 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 and uh, I have never actually run this disc through my PlayStation, so we're gonna see exactly how well it runs here live tonight let's uh, oh yeah let me click back over here we can there we go uh no i have not received a heartfelt thank you note i have i have received uh what appeared to be personalized messages over ebay once ordering them though and that's always very charming and welcome let's see you plugged in are you plugged in there we go. <laughs> That's very kind of them. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Good. I've got a PS1 card in there. Random Pokemon card, really? That reminds me, when I lived in, uh, lived in a town north of Dallas in Texas, and I would go for walks, as you do. And uh, one day on a walk, I saw a, a land, uh, a land card, a mountain card from Magic the Gathering, uh, stuck in the cracks of a, of a you know, creosoted um, telephone pole. And I pulled it out, and I was like, huh, that's neat. And as I continued walking, I found a forest. And then I found a swamp. And uh, somebody apparently had just had a ton of lands left over from, uh, or, or, you know, in excess of what they needed for their uh, deck building. And crammed them into these telephone poles and they were all you know sufficiently weathered because it does rain down there quite a lot depending on the time of year and uh yeah it was kind of a project for about a week to kind of to kind of walk in circles ever expanding circles and see exactly how far 
uh, how far their uh, their area of influence uh, reached. I do not have a Saturn, unfortunately. I would love to have a Saturn, but I do not have one. Oh, let's. Uh... Oh wow, that's gonna blow my ears out. Human Entertainment, the first company that Suda that that uh, that uh, Suda Fifty One worked for, uh, that he did. As a matter of fact, I think I've got it right here. I think is uh, not his first game, but one of them, uh, Moonlight Syndrome, which is uh, a very weird adventure story to say the least. Is what I expect. Give me one second to pull chat up on my iPad. Ooh, accomplices. Accomplices always lead up to good things. Let's see. Okay. This should be working. Oh wow. This is uh, this is a good way of saving on budget. Just make a really long image and just use camera panning to uh, again cutting out exposition. <laughs> Evening longest name. Yes, you're right. That music is uh, is exquisite. I think there are more special effects in that uh, title menu than there was for uh, for half of that FMV introduction. <laughs> Pamphlet. Oh my God! This is like uh, this is getting near um, uh, Shadow of Destiny levels of endings. <laughs> <laughs> Hit list. Oh, this is fantastic. We're going to get to fumble around this in a language that I am a beginner at on, uh, while, uh, while live. That's great. But a practice beginner, I will add. Oh, Time Zombie, thank you for the subscription. It's much appreciated. Yes, the ESRB process is very weird. I'm very interested to see that they, the hands don't actually appear to be connected to the arms in any meaningful way. Yellow Cursed Doll. Konnichiwa. Oh, hey, there's my cursor. Oh, 
Oh, hey, I can select my cursor. That's, uh... It seems uh, recursive in a way that, uh... Honestly, it might have been the origins of Metal Gear Solid 2. The icon for my cursor is bigger than my cursor. I can fit my cursor inside the icon. Oh. I don't know anything about the Hayes Code. That is a. That is a. That is a, that is a, an inconvenient place to store your extra TP. I'm gonna acknowledge. That looks like a leg. Merging from the toilet. Somebody didn't hide a body very well. Uh, nor did they find a victim that has the appropriate standard color of blood. So this is already upsetting in a number of ways. Can I open this? Oh, weird. Uh, if you turn on analog controls, both right stick and left stick, uh, control the uh, control the cursor, and uh, they will fight for it if you use them both at once. My God, the walking speed. Well, it's here too. Well, if it's not blood, why is it leading to a body? The cues are all the cues are confusing me. Evening, Phoenicia. It's good to see you. All right. Got my key. Look at my various chemicals. Maybe somebody was trying to develop a tremendous volume of film. And, uh... Oh my. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? I don't know what this does. Uh, do I press the button or do I not press the button? Whoever answers first wins. All right, pressing the button. I always press the button is a pretty easy choice. I like that. I press the button once, and that is for all. Another body part. <laughs> Wonder if that's her verbalizing in a tile-walled bathroom, or if uh, she does, that's supposed to indicate her thoughts. <laughs> hmm. Did I activate something that's going to come kill me now? Man, that's making me think of, uh, remember in Shenmue, where there was that box of kittens that Ryo could, uh, could hang out with and nurture over the course of the game? That was a solid mechanic. Uh, I guess it depends on how forceful you are, Time Zombie. Yeah, yeah, it's a box of kittens, and uh, one of the many small flavoring things they show you up front to let you know that this is not, uh, this is an adventure game with options. Yep, phone line's dead, as it should be. Oh, hey, I can run. That's, uh, 
That's good. I feel like we're making progress. Is that a sword? Can I grab the sword? Sword seems like a good thing to grab. But I guess not. Oh, yes, the vase. That's clearly the most relevant object in the room to me right now. Oh, a gun! Can I grab the gun? Probably not. What do you think this is? Resident Evil? Nope, no gun. And fireplace plaques don't even seem to be a puzzle. Is this door accessible? No, that door is for show. <laughs> yes, Viper. I think that uh, that uh, that can also maybe ungenerously also describe the Yakuza games, which are very close to my heart. I'm uh, currently wrapping up uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, and uh, am uh, and remembering that the uh, I guess I got to go upstairs, and I'm remembering that uh, the lead up to the final Amon fight, which uh, which I'm getting close to is uh, basically only reachable by doing all a lot of sub stories and a lot of uh, a lot of the mini games it's just a uh, mini game paradise those games how do i how do i do stairs oh wait i have a key uh what, what's the key to uh i don't i don't know what that what that room means but I'm pretty sure there was a door that was locked over here that I can use it on. Oh, you mean, uh, uh, Nick... Nick Ogata? Is that what his name was? Is that gonna do it? And no time zombie, I have not researched, uh, researched arcade buttons. Um, I did learn for my first time, uh, at a, playing on a candy cab that the, uh, holding, holding the joystick as though it were a cup of wine, uh, makes my wrist much happier than the, uh, sort of claw style, uh, usage that, uh, that I grew up with. What exactly? Huh. If there's not a man in this house with a chainsaw for an arm, there is a greatly missed opportunity. Evening Stripes. It's good to see you. And uh yeah, yeah, no, that's that's what we're here for. That's uh that's the only way to approach Halloween. Teeth gritted and without fear. Why does, uh, what about that door says behind the bar to you? Hmm. I feel like I want to find some way to add this to my inventory. But instead I'm just consistently, I'm merely weirded out by it. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't believe Evil Dead was an inspiration for this at all. I'm just saying, you know, you got your got your possessed hand, and possessed hand always, you know. You find a two lying around, you assume there's another two that'll add up to four. It's how mathematics works. Dramatically. <laughs> and yes, I'm playing this solely on my knowledge of how the other clock towers have played. Having played the first one, and I've also played, uh, played Clock Tower 3. Uh... Yeah, that's right. Dead end means event trigger.
bold budget choice to have no music. <laughs> yeah, right, Viper. I'm not even sure how ominous that actually was. That's a that's a, that's not a threat. That's just a legit bad connection. Well, I uh, it, this is interesting about my own comprehension. Um, as, as you might assume from the movies that I talk about at the open uh, of many of these streams, uh, Japanese cinema is, uh, is, uh, is, a, is a love of mine. And as I'm watching them, I can, uh, a lot, so much of the grammar and vocabulary that, that I know just sort of subconsciously gets picked up on and actually reinforces things that I'm kind of, uh, kind of picking, working through. And, uh, but, uh, but doing this on stream, it's like whatever part of my brain takes that language and, uh, and then converts it into concepts, uh, is not the same part of me that talks through, uh, talks through an experience like this. So, uh, whatever, uh, whatever capacity I have to play this game and, and sort of comprehend it is, uh, kind of compromised right now. I mean, to date, the number of severed appendages... Can I crawl through the window? No, I can only indicate it. Uh, the number of sever the severed appendages are not redundant, so this leads me to conclude that only one thing is dead, or many things are dead, and only one part were was preserved. Given the, uh, the fluids involved and the uh, squish-flip nature of the, uh, of the remains, I'm not yet sold on the possibility that they are human. Yes, Stripes, I agree. But th this is interesting with the uh, with several of the games that I have um, several of the of the games that I've uh, obtained for for the purpose of oh, what are we gonna do. Controllers vibrating. <laughs> it is a rare game indeed that combines both spectacle with theater of the imagination. Uh, and not off camera. <laughs> Guess that weirded me out sufficiently that I'm just gonna kind of take a smoke break out on the porch. <laughs> oh no! How do I? How do I? How do you? Is Cat Jam about something that I need to activate? I, I don't know that much uh, to be able to to do so. But uh, many of the uh, the older games that I have acquired for the sake of language language practice as well as entertainment, uh, there's enough enough common design in in just adventure games over the course of time that they're actually uh, pretty playable if you're uh, if you're willing to accept a little bit of trial and error, uh, which is just par for the course for adventure games anyway. Thank you. Yes, I will bug you for that later. I gotta say, as far as adventure game design goes, it is kind of refreshing to see that... to see that uh, doors that I cannot access are not even highlightable. And... bizarrely send me fleeing when I try to indicate them. So... Right now, my sense of the design is I am maybe not quite in puzzle-solving mode, but uh, walking around trying to trigger events because I haven't... I've looked at a lot of things. I haven't picked up any new items. Huh. 
It is eerie only so long as you consider it. Probably Bach. That, that would be my choice, I think, offhand. Though it would be wild if, if, uh, <laughs> if for some reason he was a much better composer than a player. Right, is there anything to be gained from here? Nope. Nope. Well, what is this? Oh, that's just uh, taking me down there. Alright, let's see. Uh, yes, I played the first Clock Tower on PS1. I also played Clock Tower 3. Uh, and uh, kind of mined that one for several endings. Alright. Oh, hey. Oh, it's, it is in fact not actually selectable. Well, there was this bathroom with some stuff in it I didn't quite observe. No, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go in here. Let's see what's up. Very considerate, by the way, to have the bathroom like right available right as you walk in. That's good, good guest architecture. Where is the light switch? Hmm. No, no, it's uh, it is point and click adventure time zombie. <clears throat> it is point and click. That's what that uh, that little mouse cursor up there is for. That is not for show. Yeah, PS1 Clock Tower is is, uh, is a lot of fun, and it's it's very strange to see how they retconned the uh, the enemies for Clock Tower Three. This is where we already got the key out of. I don't think that there's going to be anything that's nothing of value here. Can I push the button again? <laughs> Nope, I cannot. Anything here on the floor? <laughs> and, you know, all things considered, uh, at this point, I don't think any obstacles that I'm encountering are language-based. Um, I don't really understand what's happening, but uh, everything that I can access should be uh, knowable by what the cursor lets me uh, lets me indicate and interact with so if there's anything I'm missing it's simply because I'm not experimenting with the right things <laughs> it is um, I don't know if you remember time zombie uh, from the last stream I did a bunch of demos uh, from a lot of PlayStation underground discs and one of them had uh, had somebody on there with us with a trick on how to get easy headshots in silent scope and the way that you do that is by plugging a USB mouse into the PlayStation 2, and then once you get your scope up, you use the mouse to to indicate, uh, to kind of use it to control your crosshairs. It's uh, strange that that was even programmed in there, and it, it, I kind of wonder if that was like a leftover debug feature or something. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Something in the fireplace? Nothing in the fireplace. Giving me nothing here, game. Uh, was there something over here I could look at? Yeah, what's what's going on over here? Yeah, just a vase. <clears throat> It is, uh, you're not wrong. I don't know how my ancestors would feel about the, the whole button pushing thing. I think they'd be fine with it. All right, so that's just a slice of, slice of victim there. This is nothing to interact with. What the heck do you wish me to do, game?
You did, in fact, hear a cat, and depending upon how loud she is, uh, I might let her in. This is the bad one, and, uh, just don't want her waking up the baby. Okay, so nothing in there. Anything in my luggage of value? Of course not. Why would I travel with anything of value? Alright, uh, okay, so this guy is just sort of doing nothing for me. You know, maybe there was something that I was being led to when I was scared out of the room onto the balcony that I am not paying enough attention to that I should. So let's go back and take a look at that. Yeah, hold on a sec. and she's great yeah that's right say hello to everybody now, clearly very early on in a clock tower game because uh, hanging out and not moving is not uh, is not a fatal <laughs> fatal idleness hey kiddo okay see this is why it just, like, goes immediately for the nearest dense cluster of wires. To proceed to flop among. <sighs> Say hello. Oh, that's enough. That's, that's as much of a hello as she's going to give you. There you go. There we go. All right. So, is there anything down here? Is this now open? Do I still have a key? I do not. Was that? Oh, that was just the icon remaining. Oh, weird. Return to game, save game, load game. Yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, save a game here. It's interesting that this is all in English. Event cut off. Let's see. Okay. Actually, curious about something. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That is actually a really good thing to keep in mind that there is no autosave. In fact, I don't think there was any autosave at all uh, this generation. I'm curious, what are our options? Okay, yep, that's it. I am about to say, Buster, I know there's data on there. Uh, save reminders before something that seems like it will be sufficiently dramatic would be welcome, I will admit. Alright, so is there anything on the roof? And if I am banging my head against the wall, as I am now, and anybody chimes in with a short, with a, with a, with a solution for the next step, I'm not going to say no. Sonic 3 had autosave? Did not know that. Oh, can I do the TV? Is there anything on the TV? No, I cannot use the TV. Bed, poster. What the 
heck? Oh, weird. I am uh, learning what the shoulder buttons do. What does select do? Now there's just uh, what does screen adjustment do? Huh. I mean, basically what you think it would do. So cool. <laughs> I'm glad we solved that mystery. It's the only mystery I'm solving right now. So, it scared me out on the porch. For what? For what? I don't know. Can I turn off the light? Ha! There's a Clock Tower 2 poster. I play the piano again. Is there something I need to do with the lights off? <laughs> no, you're right, Stripe. This is, uh, this is a life of luxury right here. Evening, Young Snow. It's good to see you. We are uh, kind of doing a one-shot bumble through uh, of, uh, of Clock Tower Ghost Head. Uh, in the interim, before uh, Halloween stream starts, where we're going to be doing uh, Dead Space regularly, as soon as I can go to a uh, local used game store and buy me a copy. <laughs> Viper, you're not wrong. <laughs> is uh again bewildering in a way that I don't feel is uh is is due to a language obstacle a uh, a change that many point and click adventure games uh developed over time is uh uh is is to have highlightable or selectable objects uh you know that sort of like get a, give you give you an outline around them to let you know that they're interactable. I think, uh, I want to say Day of the Tentacle did this, and that is a quality of life feature that, uh, that I much value. Uh, no, uh, Young Snow, that, uh, by, by imagine that they're scarier than they are, like, you play them and they feel scarier when you think about them, or you played them and they were not as scarier, scary as you thought they would be. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, Star Tropics did have autosave. No, but 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 yeah, you're right. Uh, games that are on disc, uh, there's just there. It, it's a separate piece of hardware between the memory card, and uh, and the uh, and and the medium, data medium that uh, that would make it cumbersome and difficult. Huh. Well, the last thing that happened was I poked a piano and I got spooked and then I ran out into a balcony. So, uh, if anybody knows what to do next, I'm open. Unlike half of the doors <laughs> in this mansion. Uh, Young Snow, I, uh, I I will attest that Fatal Frame is in fact a super cursed horror game. It is one of my favorites, absolute favorites, and will make me scream every time. Uh, we did Fatal Frame one and two on the stream. I want to say about this time last year, and uh, it is uh, it is a rip roaring good time. But uh, I would have a very hard time playing those solo, if I'm honest. Evening Arcs, good to see you. Aw. Well, it's good to have seen you. <laughs> Maybe a better way of putting it. Alright, this this seems like a room with things that I haven't fully poked at, so. No, I no, I've I've definitely given my cursor a good once over many things here.
Clock Tower 1 is a solid game. Uh, they uh, they retcon something very very strangely in uh, between that and its proper sequel. Uh, this one came out I think between uh, I think Clock Tower Two the 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 one that's a direct sequel to that story uh, was released over here as Clock Tower Three. Um, uh, you're right, Time Zombie. Uh, the all only other downside would be the uh, Curious lack of direction that seems to define my existence here. So, time zombie, can I can I assign you on a task, on a quest, to go to Game Facts and uh, search for Clock Tower Ghost Head or Clock Tower Something Something Within, and uh, find out what to do after the piano scares me. <laughs> Thank you. It is much appreciated. Because uh, right now I've got a lot of things that I'm definitely observing and confirming there is nothing of value in. I mean, I guess at this point I don't know there's any danger, so it doesn't make sense to grab the gun and the sword. Uh, I don't seem like my my character does not seem like she is sort of preemptively combative. First bathroom has a weird design for a light switch. Oh, thank you. I am on it. Oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Stripes. Oh my god, they put the light switch on the outside. Well, okay. Alright. Okay, this is the most cursed thing of all. <laughs> Who can reach that? I should at least give you a pole so you can knock one down. I know, it's also, it's it's very funny that, like, it, it's sort of obvious what this is from, uh, from a distance of several feet, but, uh, takes her, uh, getting, like, right up there to, to kind of really confirm. Because I guess a severed leg could be anything until you look at it real close. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe that's maybe maybe that is where the uh, did you fall in? Uh, <laughs> maybe that's the origin. Definitely a, a surprising, if true, surprising effective way of covering up murder and disposal of the body. Uh, I guess they fell in. So, one in the bathroom is green. This one is... Likewise green. Okay, that is not significant. Maybe something upstairs has changed. Or maybe there's something else I can do in the bathroom. Let's see. What my options reveal themselves to be. <clears throat> the way she opens and closes these doors, it's like she read the user manual and vowed to follow the instructions to the letter <laughs> every time. I don't think I've ever opened or closed a door with that level of precision in my life. Okay, nope. Nope. Okay, so I've checked out a few of those things. No, I appreciate that. All right, so I checked out the um, the piano. Checked out the phone in the dining room. 
So there's a phone in the living room. I'm a little at a loss to know which room is the living room in this, but let's go. I do know the dining room has a has a poster uh, or a painting, and I thought I checked that out, or I thought I moved my uh, cursor over it, but apparently not. So let's try that. Unfortunately, the game has other ideas on that option just now. Is there another painting in here? Maybe that's something that gets unlocked later. Okay, let's try the poster in the bedroom. Evening, Grayling. It's good to see you. And yes, that is the most video game, uh, the most video game chase ever. I mean, I think even in Clock Tower, well, in this lineage, Clock Tower Two, in uh, in ours, uh, in, in in Western release order, Clock Tower Three, um, the. Uh, uh, the, the scissor man who chases you has his own version of that where he uh, he very very slowly goes through every door that he that he passes uh, passes across the threshold of okay so this poster is that a poster I can look at no clock tower poster that doesn't want me to look at that either what Okay. This is somebody I recognize. Am I weirded out by the death and dismemberment of my favorite mannequin? Oh, oh, huh. What? Oh, am I possessed now? Oh, I wonder if I could open more doors like this. Oh, my mouse cursor's jagged! That's right, buddy. We're not going back to normal. It is Mr. Hyde time. Uh, Time Zombie, I think it depends on the last thing they ate. <laughs> That's very funny, Fiber. <sighs> ah, thought that being cursed would give me door unlocking powers. Because now I assume I am a villain. And villains, I assume, have access to everywhere. So they can be inside locked rooms when you, as the uh, hero or protagonist, uh, finally unlock them, and they can say something very smug and self-satisfied, like, I wondered when you'd show up, or, you know, slow golf clap or something. Oh, am I evil? Am I able to, to resent Jennifer for being protagonist of another Clock Tower game now? No, I cannot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Time Zombie. Uh, uh, I mean, I know I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but absolutely uh, never look up anything having to do with death or injury on the internet. I will not even look up if I have a cold now. <laughs> it's like, oh, you've got a slight headache and you've got a lot of sinus pressure? Perhaps you have a common cold, or perhaps your sinuses are trying to viciously escape like snakes, like this man here. It's just somebody with, like, their, like, face turned inside out. Because, you know, WebMD and the like.
All right, evil key. Evil stereo. No, regular stereo. Cannot access as evil. Nothing. Oh, sorry, Ice Man Dad. I didn't see that. Mountain Dew. Yes, the uh, they all they all died. This, this mannequin died as a gamer. Few too many PvP matches, and uh, they swore so loudly into their headset that their body just blew up and scattered across the whole house. I am pleased to see that it seems that my I am evil now have access to the house theory was correct. Oh, do I get to murder this guy? Oh, come on. I bet he's totally stealing that TV. Man, I don't know what I'm even glowing for dark power for. Can't even stop a heist. Yuu-chan, <laughs> 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 we had that tense conversation and now I'm back to whatever it is I'm doing. Stealing my own stealing my own TV. Alright, this must be the living room that they mentioned with a telephone. What if the evil is uh is time locked or if I can just which just am evil now. What? Hmm. This might be a moment where being able to read the language would be beneficial. Oh well, we'll just Mr. Magoo our way to victory. <laughs> I have to say, in a TV watching day, I feel bad for the person who sits in this chair. You get the next strain chair today. I mean, it's the 90s, uh, Iceman Dan, and uh, he does want his MTV, so he is uh, finished moving those microwave ovens. Like a second balcony? But not even a luxury balcony, not even a chair or a couch out here. This is strictly pedestrian balcony structure. Ing. Yeah. <laughs> I do like this idea that that uh, that those that uh, somebody who has a unconscious or spiritually evil dark side uh, that once they start the glowing, it's just part of their day. Like they can read by it. <laughs> never gonna, never gonna stub your toe in the dark again. I am one with it, and let me tell you, that comes with some perks. I mean, evil takes many forms, time zombie. So that is not out of the out of the. That's not off the table. Whoa. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, did he fix the TV? Huh. Maybe he wasn't fixing the TV at all. No, Viper, you're not wrong. He's uh, not particularly worried about his dead wife, and also seems to... Oh, I can't examine the, uh, the, the, the armor anymore. 
uh, also seems to know who she is and be handling the uh, the the voice modulation in stride. Like, ah, oh, yes, talking a couple octaves lower than our normal pitch. I remember when I was a kid. <laughs> Oh, the fun we'd have. I'm sorry. Oh, the fun we'd have. Is this another instance with a bathroom with a light switch outside? <laughs> and, um, yeah, wild! Hehehehe. <laughs> It's just very embarrassing for a young person when their darkling aura is uh, is of a hue that doesn't match their friends or those who they would have as their friends. I'm just trying to fit in, she says. <laughs> okay, just a gun in the bathroom. Uh... Oh, you know what? Now that I have a gun, that's probably a pretty good time to save, huh? Excuse me. What if your evil aura is conditioned by something you eat? I wonder if that says high fiber diet. like a lot of sugar gives you one that's like I don't know like red or something just generally something that indicates how your health is doing okay I can't try for that anymore yeah I think what's interesting is like whether I'm good or evil uh, clearly these doors were never locked but whether I'm good or evil simply gives me access to the desire to open them so pre presumably when I was not evil uh, I just I, I couldn't go in those doors because I didn't want to uh, but now that I am evil, I do want to. Uh, which is making a mighty bold statement about curiosity here. Ah, the front door. The great equalizer. <laughs> well, especially, uh, I mean, it's not even hidden behind anything, right? And yes, I believe that, um... I can't remember from, uh... Was it Persona 4? Four, Persona 4, yeah, Adachi, uh, one of the, the villain in there, says the reason he became a cop is because he wanted to, uh, to have a gun. <laughs> and uh, that has shown up in a few of the sort of crime noir movies I've watched, uh, period, like the 60s, 70s crime noir movies. And uh, so, yeah, that is uh, that that is a thing, and also very different. It's different between America and literally every else in the world, I think. Oh, cool, I can examine... <laughs> uh, it's Chekhov's gun times five. If this gun doesn't fire five times in the course of this game, there's a serious problem with craft. And I'm not talking the cheese. There might also be a serious problem with craft. I don't know, I haven't had in a while. I guess one of the things that is quite lovely about having moved up to the Pacific Northwest is access to Tillamook, uh, which is a regional brand of cheese that you can get at the grocery store. It doesn't seem to be like a specialty thing, but uh, but I enjoy it, and I'm grateful that it's here. <laughs> Well, Tillamook sure as heck wasn't in the southeast, I can tell you that. I think it uh, advertises itself as being from Oregon in origin. I, I don't I don't know. Uh yeah, Viper, I, I think that uh Oh, can I get the gun now? 
I, <laughs> of course I can get the gun now. I've got one, why not more? Oh, now I just observe it. Nice piece, she says. Can I shoot the gun with this one? Please tell me the stupid thing can happen. No, okay. <laughs> All right. My desire to open a door is leading me to all sorts of new places. <sighs> that could be one of the greatest theft prevention devices of all time. The lack of interest. Oh ho, but I have a key that looks like it could be for something this size. Snap. Is what that key said when it got into the lock, because I guarantee you I can't use it anymore. That's right. What did I just take out of there? Did I just waste a key? What's, what's, what's the deal there? Uh, in addition to the uh, size and structure of this house, another example of its opulence is, look at that television. A CRT that size has shown up in at least four rooms so far, which in 1998 would be quite, uh, would be pretty hefty, a price tag. Yes, I, I am curious about this as well, uh, Iceman Dan. <clears throat> Is that a lucky charm? Wait, am I not evil anymore? I'm not evil anymore. Oh! I really wanted to see what was behind these doors. So, we are going to load the game. And I'm not going to pick that thing up. I rather like having access to the rooms. Wait, did I get... Uh, this was after I got the gun, yes. I want to uh, recreate my examining of the slime. <laughs> yeah, Iceman Dan, those seem reasonable for uh, for rural usage. Even though the U.S. has its share of, of straight-up wilderness, I think of, for some reason, in my mind, uh, I think of much non-urban area in the United States as, uh, whoop, wrong way, as, uh, as rural, but I don't think of it as wilderness, as a play, as, in other words, where, uh, where non-city areas where people live, I don't think of that as wilderness, um, but I do in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I think of Canada as having inhabited wilderness more than the U.S., and I'm not sure where that idea comes from. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Uh, I think I'm the most evil thing in the house right now, so I think I'm probably safe to stand there.
Sorry, Cat. All right. Thank you for waiting. Being a dad comes first. <laughs> so let me catch up here. Yeah, uh, Northwest is, I think, maybe kind of what I'm thinking of. Okay, that might be, uh, yeah, I know that, I think probably the closest thing in the uh, continental U.S. that I can think of, I mean, Alaska, of course, is, I mean, <laughs> comparable to that ratio, uh, if not uh, if not even more so. Uh, but uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, there we go, that's right, we did this. Um, but I mean, there's there are there areas out thinking Nevada, Wyoming. Um. Oh, weird. So you get the you could get the gun from there as well. That's interesting. I wonder what happens if I go upstairs and tried like, I already thought I had thought I already had the gun so I'm curious to see if uh, if there's like more ammo I don't I, mm. it's baffling uh, because it's like Schrodinger's gun or no that that doesn't make sense but uh, basically uh, the gun is where you look is it in the bathroom? Just kind of hanging out around the, you know, spray on bleach, or is it, uh, is it downstairs in the bedroom locked away? Yeah, I guess that's it. I wonder if I have access to the handgun if I'm if I'm not evil. I think I've played a game with this little, like, ambient audio, background music, anything. Uh, I can't think of one that has been this consistently silent. Alright, so I don't want to pick that up. Because I want to keep on being evil and curious. I think we're good. Yeah, case in point. What happens if I look at this? Huh. I wonder on this save file if I looked at everything as evil, and I wonder if that makes a difference. I see. Now I will check out this room, and then I will glab, glab. Then I will grab the uh, grab the amulet. Anything up here? That is uh, Silent Hill One looking refrigerator. There's a there's a puzzle in Silent Hill One that I remember. Um, you have to put a little kind of like lock in between two handles of a of a, of a refrigerator like that, or else a monster will burst out of it and get you. And that reminds me of it. All right, here we go. Good again. Oh, 
Okay, so I can I can hide it away. All right, I have access. Can I shoot the arm? Seems like a knot. Hmm. So all of the doors that I was curious about. Let's see, what is it? What is it? Show, is uh, show is the uh, the evil alter ego. So I can become show again if I like drop the um, drop the amulet into. Ah. How? Okay, I can't can't defend myself against that. Uh but I did just get weirded out. Thanks for coming out, Iceman Dan. It's great to see you. See, that doll child respects proper door usage as well. No. Uh, okay, sure. Either way is good. Huh. What a polite evil doll that will recognize and respect the loading. I think I need to hide somewhere. No, 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 no! Okay. supposed to do get stabbed and die okay <laughs> I mean I know clock tower so I know that I gotta find somewhere to hide um, but I'm not sure all right that's not gonna help me out Oh, thank you. Oh boy. It's a dead end. Still a dead end. Can I shoot the horrible ghost? Seems like a nod. All right, it worked. Now I'm def definitely at DEFCON 1 here. at Clock Tower 2, cursing it for its more recognizable and marketable villain. Ah, I can't hide anywhere. Just gonna match each other in passing. Let's going to happen here. Can I hide in the bathroom? Oh, maybe there's somewhere I can hide in over here.
Nah, I was gonna say, well, at least I'm one room away from her now. <sighs> it's not letting me, letting me do the normal clock tower thing of, uh, hiding. That's a bad idea. Uh, she's not coming in. Drop this anywhere so I can use my gun with a clean conscience. I go through the window. Nope. All right, she's just terrorizing me. I mean, she's not even turn, not even turning the light off. That's uh, you're right. Yes, very well mannered. I think this might be it for me though. Nope, no, 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 no. Classic cursed doll maneuver. <laughs> All right, so I got to run a loop, loop uh, run a loop around here, and uh, maybe I can—I don't know—ditch her in the tub or something. Maybe if I look at the head again, I'll get freaked out and turn evil. Or maybe I make it back to the kitchen. And I can hide in there. Because the kitchen is where I ran into her, so maybe there's something significant there. You know, I feel that being chased by an evil laughing doll would, uh, would make me second-guess my pacifism. But I also haven't been in the situation, so I can't say. in that room I don't what was in that room okay I can't go in that door confused okay so I can use environmental items wonder if that means I can use the sword or the gun that's in here oh this might be a bad idea Stripes. I mean, sorry. Uh, sorry, my brain reset. I've said good evening to you already. <laughs> oh, finally. The one closet I can hide in.
Oh, come now. <laughs> Only clothes go in closets. What am I thinking? Better check another room. Can I observe again? Oh, there was another door upstairs that got that same reaction. So I wonder if that was another hiding place as well. Hooray! I feel so accomplished. Oh, that's nice. Am I back to normal? I'm back... Oh, right, the first aid kit uh, healed me. Now I understand what's happening. So, back to the kitchen. find out what Miss Knife Throwing Cursed Porcelain didn't want me to see. Hmm. Curious, this is no longer an object of interest. nothing for sounding so relieved. The cursed the cursed uh, giggling thing is her cousin. Okay. and save this game here. Can I look at can I look again? Even better, can I grab any of those knives? That seems like that would be useful. <clears throat> it seems not. It seems that room is mainly for <laughs> excuse me. Uh, triggering villainy, and, uh... Oh, there must be another bathroom over here. Triggering villainy, and, uh, well, yeah, but just that, triggering villainy. Is this gross arm still weird to me? Sure is still weird to me. Chinatsu. Well, if it's her cousin, that probably explains why my character is motivated not to shoot her. But it sure does look like a cursed porcelain doll. Still of interest? Still inscrutable. So 
see, I'm looking at Time Zombies Hint. Alright, so poster in bedroom, piano in bedroom, painting. Alright, so let me go up to the bedroom then and see what that has to offer us. That's right. <clears throat> that door leads to this hallway. There seemed uh, there was something on the floor in here that I haven't looked at. Or something on the bed. There we go. Seems like a fine time to let my cat in. One second. I'm sure it's fine. After everything that's happened, it does seem a little odd to run toward the screams, but... I don't know, if I had an evil side, maybe I'd feel a little more emboldened, too. Is there a victim in here? Sure isn't. Oh, hey, there. Now we can look at the poster. Hmm. Well, she recognizes it as a game. That's useful. Oh, I've got ongoing creepy music. see no reason to think that that door would be unlocked now. Alright, so maybe the living room, which is where I saw the guy last. Still interested in this armor? <sighs> yeah, it still weirds her out. This isn't the game. There's something, I don't know, about a protagonist in a game like this acknowledging a game in the series, and then saying this isn't a game, that could possibly lead one to the conclusion that you are having a cursed experience, and that your actual fate is... in some way bound to the uh, outcome of these events. So there's more creepy talk, that's, that's cool.
Still nothing behind here. Hmm. What if that's another place where I could have found the gun? Creepy doll seems promising. Oh, I was mashing all those buttons. Alright, we're doing this again, cursed doll. selected the sword. Oh, I thought it was just button mashing. Oh, for crying out loud. one cursed thing is going to call every other cursed thing in the house. Let's see if we can try that closet trick again. And I would probably be wise to this the second time. Let's see how smart she is. easily thwarted. Alright, and with that, uh, can't use. With that, uh, narrow escape, I think that's going to be it for me for the night. This has been a fun, uh, look at this game to, uh, there we go, there we save. For future uh, playing. Uh, this has been a fun look at this game uh, as a stopgap before we get to Dead Space, which is what we're going to start on Saturday. So, Viper, it's great to see you, and uh, Time Zombie, if you're still around, great to see you too. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out, and uh, yeah, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is usually about the time that's uh, starting. Uh, so yeah, Saturday, Dead Space. Thanks, Viper. It's always great to see you.